Potassium is probably one of the most important electrolytes in our body. While low potassium can cause issues, high potassium can actually be very deadly. While there are a number of reasons why somebody could have high potassium, the two most common reasons that we see in the perioperative time frame are a decreased excretion of potassium and transcellular shifts. The two ways our body gets rid of potassium is either through the renal system or through the colonic system. So if a patient is not peeing because they have something like end-stage renal disease and are on dialysis, those patients tend to accumulate potassium. And if a patient has like an ileus or a bowel obstruction, they also have potential to have an increase in potassium. Transcellular shifts is the other reason someone can have high potassium. And that's because most of the potassium in our body lives within our cells. There's a couple different major channels that allow for the exchange of potassium inside and outside of cells, and that's the sodium and potassium exchanger, as well as the hydrogen and potassium exchanger. The most common times that we see a lot of potassium leaking out of cells is in metabolic acidosis, cellular death or high turnover, as well as medication induced. The medication that we worry about most frequently in terms of anesthesia and potassium is succinylcholine. In most people, when you give them succinylcholine, they'll have a rise in their potassium of 0.5 milliequivalents per liter. There are groups of patients who we worry will have a larger rise in their potassium after getting succinylcholine, and that's because these patients have immature acetylcholine receptors outside the neuromuscular junction, otherwise known as extrajunctional receptors. Part two of this series is going to go over the treatment for hyperkalemia.